So do you remember enough math to be able to do a problem like this without the aid of a calculator? Well, hopefully you do, but let's go ahead and take a look at this problem right here. We have one half divided by one half cubed. All right, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And of course, I'll fully explain the solution to this simple problem step by step in just one moment. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we have one half divided by one half cubed. Now, in mathematics, anytime you have more than one operation going on, we need to consider something called the order of operations. So in other words, I have one half divided by one half cubed. I could do this problem in two ways. I could be like, all right, I could do this first, one half cubed, figure that out, and then I could take one half and divide it by the answer of this. Or I could be like, well, I have one half divided by one half. I could figure this out get the answer to that, and then I can take that to the third power. So I have two approaches I could take to do this problem. Obviously, one is right and one is wrong. So we need to really understand the order of operations, and that's why I have this little thing right here written down. This is called PEMDAS. It's an acronym or, or a saying, if you will, that describes the correct order of operations. So in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, even powers, these are what we call mathematical operations. And in order to um, uh, solve a problem where there's multiple mathematical operations, you have to remember this little phrase, PEMDAS. Now, uh, of course, these letters stand for something. And here is a lovely little uh, mnemonic or memory aid to help you remember PEMDAS. It is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. Now let's see how it actually works. Okay, so PEMDAS is a checklist. We go from left to right. And the first thing we're going to start with is this P. Okay, now P stands for parentheses. So if you see any parentheses in a math problem, you're going to start there. But it's not just parentheses. It could be these brackets or these kind of squiggly brackets. Really, it's technically, it's grouping symbols. So uh, if you have a problem with multiple parentheses and brackets, you always work for the innermost parentheses first. Okay, then you kind of work your way out. All right, so E stands for powers. Now, you might be saying, well, E, that you know, this should be P if it stands for powers. Well, let's take, for example, 2 to the third power. Okay, this little number up here in the top right is called the exponent. This big number down here is called the base, the entire thing is referred to uh, as a power. So E really stands for uh, exponents, but you could think of this as powers. Okay, so let's get to this part right here. M, D, and A, and S. M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A is addition, and S uh, stands for subtraction. Now, it uh, makes sense if I'm saying that this is uh, a checklist from left to right, that we're gonna do all multiplication, then division, and addition, and subtraction in this order, but that's not the way it works. Okay, so the way this works is that you're going to look at these as two uh, groups. So we're going to do whatever, uh, we're going to do multiplication, or division, whatever we see first from left to right. So if I see multiplication, then division, I'm going to do it this way. If I see division first from left to right, I do that first and then multiplication. So again, whatever you see first from left to right, this is a very, very confused part of the order of operations. And addition and subtraction works the same way. All right, so this is the first thing we need to consider uh, in this problem. Now, the way this problem is written, even if you didn't um, understand the correct order of operations, it's you know, probably most of us can just look at this and just intuitively uh, kind of say, you know, I think I have to do this first. But you don't want to be guessing. You don't want to be like, I think this is right. We don't want to think we want to have absolute certainty. So in this problem, uh, do we have any parentheses? No. Okay, so there's no parentheses. So let's move on. Do we have any powers, any exponents? Yes. So that's what we're going to have to do first. We're going to have to figure this out before we move on to multiplication and division. And obviously we have division right there. So let's go ahead and do this right now. 
Okay, so 1 half divided by 1 half cubed. I get to figure out what 1 half cubed means. And what does that mean? Well, it means 1 half cubed means take 1 half and multiply it by itself 3 times 1, 2, 3. And of course, we're multiplying fractions. So when we multiply fractions, we simply multiply the respective numerators times the, resp uh, times the respective denominators. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2, of course, is 8. So 1 half cubed is equal to 1 eighth. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at right now. So we have 1 half divided by 1 half cubed. We figured this out, and now this problem is simply 1 half divided by 1 eighth. All right, so now this is, comes down to your ability to divide fractions. This is very simple. Of course, if you remember how to divide fractions, but let's go ahead and take a look at the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't that important, not only for me personally, I mean, it's a great way if you do wanna show your support for my channel uh, by subscribing, that's a simple little act that really goes a long way for me, but that helps me reach my goal. And my goal is to reach other people like yourself that are interested in math, but uh, particularly those people that are struggling in math, people that might be like this, I hate math, I don't understand it, you know? And uh, unfortunately, uh, many of these people quit uh, they quit uh, learning math, okay? They give up because they're like, I'm bad at math. That's not the case. 99% of uh, people that are in this state can be great at math. They just don't believe that, and they're not really getting the proper instruction or the uh, proper encouragement. But let me tell you this. If you're in this state right now, I'm going to tell you two things, okay, that are really going to make all the difference in the world. Number one, there are no shortcuts uh, when it comes to learning math. So if you are like, eh, you're not willing to put in the work, I mean, if you're not really working that hard and you're frustrated, you're gonna remain frustrated no matter what. So you gotta be willing to work really hard in mathematics, even if you're good at math. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to find a teacher that um, you like and understand, okay? So that's not so easy. And if you can't find a teacher, I'd like to be that teacher. So I have a ton of content on my channel Basically, basically, right now, I have over 2,000 plus YouTube videos from basic math to advanced math. In other words, you need to go find an instruction that works for yourself. That's what my channel is all about, is to help those people out there that really do need assistance on math. Well, listen, I know I'm kind of speaking you know, a lot here and interrupting the prom, but this is the reason why I make these videos, okay? I make these videos to help people uh, not give up uh, on themselves in, when it comes to mathematics. That's a major, major crisis. But anyways, if you need help with anything math, check out my full math courses. Uh, you'll find links to those in the um, uh, description. But also, I have a ton of content that I made for you on my YouTube channel as well. All right, so let's get back to this problem. This is super easy. One half divided by one eighth is equal to what? Well, we have to understand how to divide fractions. So defining fractions is pretty straightforward. When we see a uh, division problem and we have fractions, what we're gonna do is change that to a multiplication uh, problem. So we're gonna go from division to multiplication, but the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna look at the fraction to the right of the division operator. In this case, it's 1 eighth, and we're gonna flip it upside down. Okay, so we can go from division to multiplication by flipping the fraction to the right of the division operator. So now this is 1 half times eight over one. Okay, so we went from a division problem to a multiplication problem, and we, of course, are talking about fractions here. So how do we multiply fractions? This is super easy. All we have to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So we have one half times eight, I'm sorry, one times eight is eight, and two times one is two. Eight divided by two, of course, is four. All right, so a pretty basic problem, but you know nothing's basic if you don't understand it, right? And there's no um, shame if you're like, you know, I don't get something or I forgot something. That's perfectly okay, and it's perfectly okay to make mistakes. Now, if some of you out there are thinking to yourself, oh yes, I remember this, but it's been 10, you know, 20, maybe 50 years, and you know you really were good at math, or maybe you didn't learn math well enough, and you feel like, you know, I could have done much better. I just launched a course. It's the perfect course for you. It's called Math Skills Rebuilder Course, okay? It's my Math Skills Rebuilder Course. You'll find a link to it in the description, but basically, I start off by teaching you basic arithmetic, all this kind of stuff like this, 
Then I get into a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, uh, even some basic trigonometry and uh, some basic probability and st uh, statistics. It's a self-paced course. You could take your time and just kind of build up all those math skills that a lot of you, you know, once had, or maybe you never uh, learned the first time around. But here's my attitude about math. Uh, even if you are not a student, the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. Just the whole process of learning math, it's excellent for your critical thinking. And of course, you know, it just helps you um, analyze critical prompts. It's just really, really good for you. That's my take on math. Hopefully you feel the same way. But uh, anyways, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.